First, there was Marlin. Now, there is Clipper. Can it save this printer? Well, let's explore this journey together on converting the CR-10S to Clipper. Hello, I'm Joseph. This is the CR-10S5. This has been sitting for years unused. The last project we did was to print some brackets. So you can see that, you know, they're fairly large. Uh, this wouldn't have print on the CR-10 or 300 by 300. This really did need a larger size. And um, we, you know, I've got this because we thought it would be a good idea to do larger prints and offer them for sale. But imagine trying to ship something this big uh, after it's printed doesn't make sense on top of that we had to slow down the print so much because this bed here is pure glass with a hunk of metal and so it's about 30 pounds is moving back and forth and we have to slow down prints to about 11 to 15 millimeters a second anything faster than that there's an excessive amount of ringing and when you're trying to do prints that will not be finished will be shipped as is the details mattered and so it was just a kind of a waste to be honest to give you some sense of scale this is a seven inch uh, fire tablet. Uh, this thing also needs to go forward so it's not just this little space here. By the way, it's about the size of like a dryer, but it also needs to go all the way back too because this is a bed that it's a bed slinger. Um, so you can see that you know you need a lot of space for this. This will take up an entire table for sure. And then on top of that, this thing is still running Marlin, which I had to spend so much time doing custom compiles, getting everything to work just so you can get a BL Touch. This did not ship with your BL Touch and this bed is so uneven, even with the BL Touch. Um, if I try to home, one thing that, that this has a problem with is that it is also so very loud. <laughs> just look how, look at the speed. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is first clean this up, but secondly, move this to Clipper. I have a couple other print printers on a Clipper device or a device that can run Clipper. The Raspberry Pi, sorry, not the Raspberry, the Orange Pi. Oh, this is not very good. The Orange Pi <laughs> 3.0. Uh, that was my most recent replacement. It's been working great. I can put uh, several printers on it. So this will be one of them. I'm hoping to first get rid of the sound or the excessive noise on the motors. Um, and secondly, to be able to um, Okay, that just fell. Anyways, to be able to use the entire bed. Because if right now we can maybe use about this much of the bed, the rest of it's kind of off limits. Okay, I've loaded the firmware.bin on here. Now, I don't remember if I actually used the Arduino to flash this. I believe I did. And I don't need to use the Arduino to jump this with the new bootloader. So the bootloader I should have on here should already let me Go ahead and flash the machine. Oh no, it's not. It's not. Okay, so um, I'm failing a lot and I figured I'd just confirm the board. So it is an Atmega 2550. I was trying to compile it for the 12 whatever. Um, so yeah, that was fun. I had to take this apart again uh, to be able to do this crap. And I hate taking this thing apart because it's so so damn annoying so many screws but yeah now i'm gonna go back and try to compile it again and i i don't think i can compile it with the sd card to be flashed i actually just connect it via usb and flash it that way and i'm hoping i can do that with the uh the orange pie okay and uh it's now flashed as it's a blank screen um i had to do that via usb actually not micro usb so that was the only thing to set it back to the uh uh, at Mega 2560 and then flashed it via USB with the only USB item connected to my Raspberry or, or my Orange Pi 03. And uh, now it's just to work on the configuration. Okay, so it's kind of cool that I got the screen. Uh, I can actually use it. I thought it was really cool. <clears throat> Except um, I'm still working on the BL Touch. Now I can get it to trigger, or not trigger, I can do pin, pin down. Okay, come on. So it's down. <clears throat> and then we could do pin up. And it goes up, which is good. Um, if I do <clears throat> pin down again, 
and then go into uh, touch mode and query probe, it says trigger. That's because I reversed the pin, but that would mean that when I do have it here, when I do push it up and I do query probe again, it should say open. It just says trigger. Query probe. No, you're not going to let me see what I have here. There we go. So yeah, I just keep saying trigger, trigger, trigger. <coughs> um, this is an official BL touch. I've looked at the guide. Uh, I do have a non-official BL touch somewhere around here, but this is the actual one. Um, it's like 3D touch, but this is the BL touch from the manufacturer, whoever. I don't remember what it is. Anyways, um, I'm just having the issue where the trigger or slash open is not working correctly. I've tried reversing the pins. They don't seem to work. When I change the pins, I can't actually probe up or down. Uh, sensor type, same thing. Doesn't matter. So I'm a little stuck. Okay. So I got the BL touch to work. If I go ahead and hit all, we'll go ahead and home. Unfortunately, <laughs> but the issue was the, um, the pin to have this trigger is the same pin for the end stop. So this is actually not connected. Um, so I just swapped them. So now that pin goes to the BL touch and we can see right there here as it touches. Um, so that, that's working now. The pin to switch, I removed the end position because it was an invalid uh, combination. And now I have it fully honed. Okay, so I've configured the bed mesh to start. However, um, I need to heat the bed up to something. Right now I have it to 45. If I try to put it to 60, it will take 45 minutes to heat up this bed. And even then the outer edges would still be relatively cold. And that's because underneath there's actually a very limited range of this, uh, of this heating thing, this heating element. Like it don't, it literally only goes to about right here where you see these screws at. So, uh, yeah, there's no point to put it in there to there. So now it's almost there. It's been about five minutes. <laughs> I'm assuming I have to wait five more minutes, but then I'll start the uh, bed level. And then we'll do our first test print. So here is the final result. It is uh, 1.5 millimeters difference. Normally, this is down to about, I try to get it down to about like 0.3. So yeah, really warped. Uh, but hopefully I can still print on this at least a little bit better than before when I was using it with Marlin. Okay, here is the first test of the outer perimeter and um, this side's too low, this side's too high. There are actual springs. I don't remember if I did this or if it, if it came like this, but there are some yellow springs here that I can tighten and loosen. So uh, I'm hoping that I can uh, tighten or loosen, redo the bed level, try again. Rather than guessing on how much to tighten or loosen, I went ahead and enabled screw tilt adjust. Uh, so let's go to all the four points and it tells me what to adjust afterwards. And this is just repeating it many, many times until I can get it somewhat closer. Okay, after screw tilt adjust, I went ahead and got it down to 0.5 rather than one point, whatever it was, 1.8 or something like that. Um, I'm gonna try to do another print and see how that turns out. Okay, and we are done, at least for now. Now, technically, I do have another project for this. I have to install this board. I got this board when I got the BL Touch years ago. And the issue was I was just exhausted by the time I got this to work with Marlin with all the custom com um, configuration and everything else. So yeah, it works now. So this is a just a simple 10 by 10 grid, one pro point each point. Um, there are some areas that's a little low and I can do, fix that by increasing this to maybe 15 points and also um, having at least three probes per point, but that's going to take it like 45 minutes to do, at least to, to do the bed level. And I, I didn't want to wait that long. Um, but yeah, so that that's printing great now. I can use the entire bed. I've never been able to use the entire bed. In fact, I barely could be able to use this amount of the bed without a significant amount of glue uh, just to have anything stick, even with the BL Touch and Marlin 1, 1.0. And here is the first print that has come off this machine. 
Now, I did not calibrate flow at all on this uh, this machine. I didn't uh, calibrate the extruder. I did not do any type of residence compensation or input shaping. The backside here, you can see how I swiped all the glue that literally transferred onto the build here, but it is perfect through and through all the way across. Uh, really, really good stuff here Come from Clipper. It's able to manage uh, to be able to print this quality as before this was never possible. I uh, wouldn't have stuck to the bed for printing this long of a print, which is practically the entire bedside. So what's next? Um, <laughs> it's really difficult. If you have this printer, obviously getting Clipper on here is going to be a game changer in terms of being able to leverage the entire bed. I think that's that's awesome. You can leverage input shaping or resonance um, compensation, which is the same thing, just a different name. You can leverage flow rates, um, and uh, which is usually like linear advance. And then you can, you know, just configure your shooter to print a little bit better. This is a little bit wispy, so I probably do want to um, change that, but that's because of this also very long Bowden tube. So potential upgrades that you can do is one, Obviously, if you don't like the how loud this machine is, you could upgrade to one of these boards here where it does have independent um, Z-axis or Z, yeah, Z-axis motors, stepper motors. So you have X, Y, Z1, Z2, and extruder. These are 229, so they could tend to technically do sensorless homing. Um, <clears throat> and then there's all a bunch of other features on this board here, but I never got to it. This will be probably like a part two of this video of me upgrading to that. And then um, the other things is you probably want to convert to so at least a direct drive to get rid of some of the stringing if you do have a, that type of problem. <clears throat> There's a little bracket you can get for about 15 bucks. In fact, I have it on my Ender 3 here. It comes with the extension cable that you need for your extruder. Uh, so it's really, you know, very, very easy. And it gives you the exact measurement for the, the base, which is 10 millimeters that you cut. So you have to do this weird measurement and put in and measurement and put in again. Uh, and then I printed out this little custom cooler thing, which gets rid of that black thing here. And the only reason why I hate this is because, first of all, my BL Touch depends on this metal thing. But if I need to get access to anything here, it's really difficult. I got to take this off, but then I have to take the BL Touch off at the same time. So that's another print I'm going to do. Um, with that all said, the other thing that you're going to obviously probably want to do is some way to lighten this bed. Now, there is the metal spring sheet that you can do the clips with as well. Um, that's $120. That's a lot of money for a bed. This glass, if you ever break it, it's 100 bucks that, I, that I've seen so far. You can go even lighter with probably propylene. It's like mem membrane bot or something. Mem Membot. I don't know what their name is, but they actually still sell these beds. Polypropylene is very easily to be damaged, so you may want to put a sticker sheet on it. So that's $90 for the polypropylene. Sticker sheet is $20 for two stickers. So you can do that, and um, you, can, you can get a much lighter bed, but that's maybe increasing the speed, maybe like 15 millimeters extra a second. You're not getting much faster because this metal sheet is still very heavy. And then the bigger thing is if you want to at least print, if you at least want to print in PET G, um, you you really do need to fix this bed heating issue because the max temp is for 60 here. You probably want to print, print at 70, um, but the edge of this bed is not heated, which means that this is going to drop off to maybe like 30 degrees Celsius versus the 70 that would be at least in the center. And that upgrade is $200. Then you probably also want to get Z rods to go from the base to the top if you're going to do tall prints, totaling around four to five hundred dollars worth of upgrades. And that's not even ex um, including the fact that you will probably want to put like a 1.0, 1.2 nozzle on here. You're not going to get very good flow rate because the max I think is like five or six millimeters a second. So even if you do a, a direct extruder or direct drive type of configuration, you need to upgrade the hot end as well. There are volcano style hot ends that you can put in here that is compatible with the Ender 3 bracket that's on here. But that's like $70 minimum, $80, $100, $120. $100, Plus you may need extension cords because this, this isn't the standard one that you get for the Ender 3. This actually has like an aux thing here. So you need to get like the seven piece extension cord for that. I don't know, it goes into like a whole plethora of things, but 
when you spend, you know, a thousand dollars on this, we spent, I think 800 plus, um, and then you got to do $500 more worth of upgrades. That's, that's kind of pushing it. I'm not even including the price of this board here. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was like 50 or $60 at that time of purchase. Plus the BL touch that added. And this is the authentic BL touch, not the, not the, um, 3d touch stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to say in terms of with that same amount, you can get a brand new printer that prints up to 500 millimeters a second. That's the uh, Elegu Neptune 4 Max. You do lose some volume. So it's a 420 by 420 by 480. So you can still print tall, but you're not going to print as wide. You're probably going to be, be able to do like, I don't know, a third, a third less of the bed. But regardless, it's still, it's still going to get you a lot quicker. Um, I don't see a point in printing faster with this, to be honest. It's nice to have the more lighter bed because these clips and everything else and hearing this thing swath back and forth and almost tear about your, your table in the process. Um, it would be nice to switch to a lighter bed and off the glass. And because you now are on Clipper and you have the BL Touch, which is probably the most accurate um, device you can use to get a bed level. And it doesn't matter if it's metal, plastic, glass, it'll work on every surface. Uh, it's a much better purchase uh, to at least lighten the bed in that regard. But again, that's like $100 minimum.